Incredibly, it is already four years ago. The huge fire which almost destroyed Notre Dame Cathedral here in Paris. A real trauma for all French people. Destruction, though, followed by a passionate promise that the cathedral would be reconstructed in time for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. On Revisited, we also had a promise for you to follow the reconstruction step by step to take stock of the situation once every year. So this edition is the third part of our series. In the first, we visited the construction site, saw the damage and how the building was secured to stop it collapsing. Last year, we met with many of the tradesmen and women who mobilised throughout France to restore Notre Dame to its former glory. We also followed the restoration of the great organs of the cathedral at a company in the south of France. For our company, it's rather rewarding to participate in the restoration of the organ in this place. It's real. It's Notre Dame. There's no question. It means a lot to us, that's for sure. But before the organs are put back in place, there is still much work to do at Notre Dame. This year, 2023, were really crucial to the project. The cathedral's spire must rise again into the Parisian sky by the end of the year. Well, in this new edition of Revisited Them, we meet the people rebuilding the spire of the architect Violette Le Duc. We'll also see that as all the work progresses, others have been digging microscopically through its entrails, looking for clues as to the monument's history. Julien Sauvage with Catherine Norris-Trent revisit Notre Dame for France 24. A colossal wooden structure is slowly, painstakingly taking shape in eastern France, 300 kilometers from Paris. 80 tons of oak beams, which will form the base for Notre Dame's world-famous spire. I'll only ever work on one project like this in my career. I've been a carpenter for 38 years, and this is the most wonderful project, the most emblematic and exceptional project. I'm so grateful to be able to work on this. It's a masterpiece. It's a difficult job, but we're all emotionally invested in it. So it's a real joy. The specialist team of carpenters is checking every detail is perfect before the structure can be installed on the roof of the cathedral. Today we are doing a dummy run, fitting it together. So if there are little things to sort out, we'll correct them, so we can be sure it will all work on site. It's very demanding. These are very heavy pieces, with huge dimensions, and all carved just so. It's very complicated to fit together. Four French firms are working together to rebuild Notre Dame's spire and its base, an intricate structure which will rise 30 metres high. They all know there's no margin for error. Vous en êtes d'où, Axel euh, bah là, on assemble ça. Ouais. Et après, vous l'assemblez Et puis après, il y aura le perçage à faire que les gars. D'accord, ça marche. It's a sprint, but we're in control. Deadlines are important. While the base is being hauled into place, we'll be carrying on carving other pieces of the spire, which will be installed later. They're making an exact copy of the 19th century spire created by architect Eugène Viollet le Duc. His design was well documented, but reproducing it remains no easy feat. We have to rebuild the framework exactly as it was, so we're working a lot from archives, looking to get every detail right. So yes, it is a challenge every day. There will be challenges installing it, challenges because the pieces of timber are exceptionally big and heavy, and above all, there's the challenge of the time frame. Basically, this is a project where we take on big challenges practically every day. For some, it's a challenge with a taste of revenge. On the 15th of April 2019, Viole le Duc's spire fell into the flames, watched by crowds of Parisians in despair. At the time, the firm Le Bras Frère was restoring Notre Dame's roof. 
boss Julien Lembra bitterly recalls being suspected of setting off the blaze. When you see a jewel of architecture such as Notre Dame go up in smoke before you, when you've just begun work on what was without doubt one of the best projects of your career, it's obviously a cataclysmic shock. And the shock was even worse because we were coming in for all sorts of unfair accusations from the press, the media. <laughs> but now our name is everywhere because we're helping to rebuild and save the cathedral. And I think that's a great way to turn the page. A police investigation still hasn't been able to determine the cause of the fire. But Julien Lebrun and his workers have the confidence of the restoration body. They won the bid to head up the rebuilding of the spire. And in the glare of cameras from all over the world, the former French army general appointed by Emmanuel Macron to oversee Notre Dame's restoration has come to visit and see how the spire is shaping up. For many people, the great symbol of the fire was the collapse of the spire. And so when they see the spire reappearing in the sky above Paris towards the end of the year, people will know that we're really getting there. Even though there are so many equally important works going on inside which people can't see. So this is an important step because it's really a critical point in its reconstruction and a step which has considerable symbolic power. Several times a week, this barge has been navigating down the River Seine to deliver a very special cargo. Blocks of stone carved from quarries a few dozen kilometers north of Paris. The limestone formed some 45 million years ago has been carefully chosen. It's virtually identical to that used originally to build Notre Dame. Some is being used to repair the structure of the cathedral. Other stones to breathe new life into the legendary gargoyles and chimeras of Notre Dame, damaged by fire and by the passage of centuries. So here you can see my colleague Danae working on a model for the head and back of a chimera, because it had completely been eroded by time, frost, rain and sun. So she's using drawings from the time they were created, and basically we chose the one that it resembles the most. But old sketches of these grimacing creatures, known as the guardians of Notre Dame, aren't always precise. So the sculptors have room for just a little artistic license. We try to be faithful to the design. We're not really creating them, but it is a drawing we're working off. So there's always a bit of a gap with reality. The paws, for example, don't look like the drawing, because it was probably sketched quite quickly. So we've had to interpret how they'd be, even though we're not strictly designing them. These clay sculptures won't adorn the heights of the cathedral. They'll serve as models for a new generation of statues carved in the freshly quarried stone. The chimera restored by Danae will go into a museum exhibition on the restoration. I'm going to do a slight movement on the head so it looks a bit more lively, but I'm not sure whether it will be accepted or not. Inside the depths of Notre Dame, a veritable forest of scaffolding runs right through the heart of the cathedral. It's difficult to make out its grandiose walls or pillars through the labyrinth of metal tubes. But the occasional opening provides a breathtaking glimpse of what the monument will look like once restoration is complete. Some parts have already been restored to a blonder, whiter stone that we weren't used to seeing. Visitors coming to discover the cathedral will be coming inside in a little more than a year, and they'll discover Notre Dame really amplified as it's never been seen in living memory. In some areas where the structure's already been restored to near its former glory, the scaffolding makes way for those workers behind the tarpaulins affecting every last detail. 
Marie Parent is meticulously restoring Notre Dame's choir wall, which dates back to the 14th century. You can see when there are small white dots there, I'm going to put a little bit of colour in. And the black line breaks off at times, so I'm going to continue it here a little bit so that the eye isn't caught up on things that bother it and stop us enjoying the coherence of the whole thing. And Marie isn't the only one concentrating on minute details. In Brittany, scientists are also working to reconstruct the past. Delphine Barbier-Pin is analysing samples taken from a sarcophagus discovered under the floors of Notre Dame. And she's hunting for grains of pollen. So we add different acids one after the other in order to eliminate everything here that's not pollen, which is extremely resistant. It's made of a material close to that of the exoskeleton of insects. Pollen will help piece together the mysteries of these samples, collected during a preventive dig in 2022 to find out what lay under the transept crossing. Amazed archaeologists unearthed statues, sculptures, and fragments of the cathedral's 13th century rood screen. They also discovered two lead sarcophagi containing human remains. The presence of holes in them allowed us to insert a keyhole camera, and so we were able to see inside in real time. We've clearly seen tufts of hair, perhaps even remnants of skin at the level of the skull. There are textiles, and very good news about the state of preservation inside, there's a whole cushion of vegetation at the level of the head. One sarcophagus contained the remains and adornments of a high priest who died in 1710. A rare treasure trove for paleontologists like Delphine. Really, to find all this vegetation in perfect condition, considering its age with whole leaves, is something quite exceptional. And the possible presence of pollen, which she's currently searching for, could provide a wealth of historical information. Firstly, that could tell us about which plants they placed under him, so we could learn about the funeral rites. But we'd see if there were any post-mortem practices, such as external embalming with a plant paste, or internal embalming with evisceration, that was usually with plants, which helped to preserve or reduce odors for transporting or exhibiting the body. The results of this research are expected in 2024. Meanwhile, the first elements of Notre Dame's spire have arrived on site. The beams have been pre-assembled at the foot of the cathedral before being hoisted into place. There are rafales at the moment, they went to 50, Gabriel. It's not once again, they arrive at 50. Each element weighs nearly five tons and has to be lifted to a height of more than 60 meters without swaying and colliding with the monument or the scaffolding. It's very delicate because of the sheer weight of the elements to be assembled and we have to fit them between the scaffolding and the masonry. It's all going to be down to the skill of the crane operator who will do all the work up there. Then our carpenters will be up there to guide the piece into its right place. And then we do fine tuning once they're in place. Precision is going to be essential. Là, elle pourrait même arriver comme ça parce qu'on sera en appui sur le pied là et après tu redescends le pied, ouais. Ouais, c'est bien ça. Up on the roof of Notre Dame, everything's in place to receive the huge sections of the base. Once they're installed, the carpenters can start assembling the spire. 
Soon we'll see a huge scaffold rising from the floor of the cathedral, 100 meters high, to the full height of the spire. That will support the assembly of the spire. And from the end of this year, 2023, we'll start covering the spire and all the scaffolding will come down as the covering is completed. Above the Paris skyline, the spire's solid oak framework will gradually take shape. An exact copy of the burnt original. Even errors in the old spire will be faithfully reproduced. The cathedral was a never-ending experiment, as was its framework. The early experiments of the 13th century framework will be restored exactly as they were, to such an extent that we even have to argue with the carpenters sometimes, to tell them that we know it's not perfect, we could do it better, but we're not going to change it. The cathedral held up very well for eight centuries before the fire, so there's no reason to change anything. The structure will last a month, a year, even a hundred years, but it will remain 800 years old, 21st century oak for a 13th century framework. These complex operations will last until the year's end, under the gaze of Parisians and tourists eager to see this spectacular cathedral reborn by the end of 2024. Julien Sauvager with Catherine Norris Trent revisiting Notre Dame for France 24. Well, that's all for this week's edition. Don't forget, of course, you can catch it and all the previous editions as well on our website at france24.com. More news coming up very shortly. Thanks for watching.